aired August 8, 1992. All right, where are we going? You ready? Ladies and gentlemen, live in our studio. Big Chill, I, I, I can't, I, really, I can't believe this. This is like one of my heroes <laughs> and the driving force of Fleetwood Mac. I mean, I, I thought it was nice, you know, meet Stevie backstage, you know, last year. But, I mean, this is, I mean, Billy, Billy can tell you. I mean, I'm listening. I mean, yeah. I'm not worthy. <laughs> I'm not worthy. This, this is why this is the greatest job in the world. Lindsey Buckingham is here. Lindsey, thank you so oh, much. Oh, God, thanks for having me down. Beautiful town you guys have. Thank you, man. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. <-o. laughs> <laughs> so, Lindsay, let, where, where do we start, man? I, I, I know, I know, I know. This is your show. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> was, 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 like, was like Johnny Stew a real person? <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. This guy listens. Yes. I love him. He's been saving that one for weeks going, you know, if we ever get him in here. <laughs> well, that was sort of a takeoff on John Stewart, actually, uh -huh. of all people. Hmm. But, you know, it's an, that's, that's like the song Wrong. It's one of those generic type guys you know i love that thing man yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so all those there's a frankenstein bit in the middle there. <laughs> Yeah. I love it. Yeah, find it. We need to play that thing. Uh, so, so, so you started, man. You grew up out in California, right? And, and you and Stevie got together. When, when did you first first meet? Now, 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 you were doing something on your own, right? Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know what happened. You, yeah, you, about twelve years old. Yeah, I started doing something on my own. No, I. Um, you came into some money. Uh, no, oh no. I was just, uh, <laughs> you know, I started playing when I was very young. I didn't take lessons. Uh, never. I still don't, you know, read music. So I was You're just, kidding. I was just doing my thing uh, early. I had an older brother who brought home Elvis and everything, and and that was. You know, probably not an uncommon story. Uh, Man, I, no, y'all, no, that's, I mean, you played with Elvis as a youngster. Yeah. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah, and uh, Elvis, yeah, Elvis came over to the house. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, Stevie, uh, we met right after, uh, she's a year older, but we met uh -huh. right after uh, high school and uh, got in a band together for a while. And then um, uh, when that kind of broke up, we got together romantically. This was like 72 now mm -hmm. you're talking about. Yeah. And started working as a duo, you know, musically, yeah. and uh, eventually found ourselves in L.A. And uh, that the album, the Buckingham Knicks Thang, yeah, uh, eventually uh, took place. And that was it. That was kind of a weird situation because that uh, we were, you know, very proud of that album. It, it came up and wow. went right back down in. Uh -huh. And we had managers in L.A. who uh, were trying to get us, uh, big managers. They had, like, the Carpenters and Jim Croce, so they didn't want to see us, right? Right, yeah. They wanted. They were trying to get us to play steakhouses after about uh -huh. the first month. Uh -huh. you know. <laughs> Feeling. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's see. One way, <laughs> one way ticket to Palookaville, as they say. You know, so, uh, and then in places, you know, around here and in the south and some places on the east coast, suddenly there were these pockets of popularity popping up for that album, and... Yeah. Uh, over a period of time, we were able to like headline for five thousand people, which was very strange. The discrepancy between that and the steakhouse vision um, that we were getting in yeah. LA, you know. Yeah. And right then, uh, Mick heard a song called "Frozen Love" off of that album and uh, asked us to join. Actually, asked me to join first. And, uh, now, the story that I've heard is that he was actually aud mm. was he auditioning the studio? Yeah, and they exactly. played a piece of your album that had been recorded. Right, in that Keith studio. Olsen, who had done the, the Buckingham Knicks album, mm. uh, was showing off the room. Uh, the sound of the room with uh -huh. something that he felt uh, represented the room and something that he felt represented his engineering. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, actually Stevie and I were in the smaller studio in the back of that complex working uh -huh. on some demos and I walked in and here's this giant guy kind of stomping his foot to the <laughs> solo. Mm -hmm. and what the... You know, yeah. <laughs> well, man, when I mean, you know the song we play, I mean that that sounds like Fleetwood Mac. I mean, that, yeah. So so Mick like heard that and just like like took the sound. That's the basis. Yeah, I think he heard something there, and uh, I I guess he figured that Bob Welch, who was the guitar player before mm -hmm. myself, was, was getting ready to leave. And Mick's a very intuitive guy, so uh, uh -huh. he said, uh, "Hey, what do you think?" And yeah. we said, oh, I don't know. Let's think about this for a while. And mm. again, because there were some other things going on, it wasn't that easy a decision. Uh, it was the steakhouse thing was still a possibility. That was a possibility. <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> we'd been working up the steakhouse uh, 
you know, the repertoire. But uh, <laughs> so no, we we spent about a week thinking about it because, in a sense, you're giving up a certain amount of your identity to join uh -huh. a situation. But we weighed the pros and the cons and figured we had a lot to learn from these guys and vice versa. And I think we could probably safely say it worked out. Yeah, pretty I think good. it worked out. I think right. it did work. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 when you decided to to get out of Fleetwood Mac, was it basically like just tired of the of the tour and the grind and stuff? Just just let you get on a little bit uh, with, with yourself. Well, you know, um, the, the very chemistry that made that group what it was, I think, had sort of uh, uh, was causing problems at that time. There were five managers. It was hard to get everyone in the room at the same time. Yeah. Certain people had personal problems. I just thought it was not a very creative atmosphere anymore. And, uh, you know, there are times to, uh, it, well, in a group situation, you've got to play ball and you've got to do what's right for the group. And then there are times to look at what's going on and you have to think about your own survival and, and your own growth, too. Well, that's what we're doing here, and we're going to fire Randy. So, 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 so we have. <laughs> I got him coffee. <laughs> you know, so I just made the jump, and uh, I haven't regretted it for a minute. I mean, it was just jumping over into some new fresh turf, and and you do a lot of work at home, right? Yeah, I have a studio in my head. We, mm. Well, we did the Tango in the Night album at my. In fact, the Tango in the Night album paid for my studio. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that one. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's great working at home. Uh, the price is right, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it was great. I worked, for this album, uh, worked on this album for about three years, and it was the first time that I had a chance, really, to spend the amount of time and to really tap into the potential, make the album that I wanted to make. Wow. Um, three years. Huh? Three years. So yeah. how, how much stuff <laughs> did you do that, that you just didn't have room on the well, album? Well, we cut about twice as much material as we ended up using. But uh -huh. again, I, I just consciously didn't put myself on the treadmill, and I... Uh, we just, you know, we're picking and choosing based on what was going to hang together with what we knew was going on already. And mm -hmm. uh, it was it was just a nice luxury to be able to do and to start from a certain position of strength again. Uh -huh. And and you're like, like music. I mean, talking about talent. I mean, never had a lesson or read music. How, how many instruments do you play? Just uh, Not that many. I mean, a lot of it is, it, I mean, guitar is really, guitar and piano, you know, uh -huh. mostly guitar. But uh, the other things, you can, if you can hear it in your head, you can sort of approximate it on, uh -huh. on, on something else. That's that's the approach that I use with my trumpet playing, and I promise I wouldn't bring this up. But, you know, if if you ever you know decide to get going on the road, I'm I'm perfect on the road. Uh, you know, all right. trumpet. You if know. you're willing to double up in a room, we're all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, are, are you going to play? Will you play some off off your latest Out of the Cradle Force? Or? Oh, sure. I you know I brought the little thing here. Um, great, man, great. Are we are we ready for something? Yeah, yeah ready. Please. Okay. Sorry. Well, you know this is this is a. Uh, uh, slightly more serious thing but what the hey no um there, <laughs> there's uh there are three uh guitar instrumentals on the record and uh the one i'm gonna i'm gonna dovetail one of those into an actual song okay, okay. this is a, a something very old actually a rogers and hammerstein show tune called this nearly was mine this is one of my dad's favorite songs um and there's kind of a thread running through this into the song because uh the actual song i'm gonna do is called street of dreams and this was written about my myself at a time when I was drifting creatively a little bit and my father who had died many years before that I used to go and sit and talk to him and imagine what he'd say back to me what advice he'd give to me All so right. this sort of runs through here so here you go
of dreams And there's no telling What they'll say Some goosebumps on my goosebumps on that one, is it? <laughs> Hold me, <laughs> man. That is hot. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like. Uh, you know, it just need a little trumpet, I think. Just no, 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 please, no, no, no. no. <laughs> that was great. Hey, y'all, hang on. Lindsey Buckingham is live in our studio. Hey, we're just starting, man. We're gonna cut him loose again. Hang on, All we'll right. be right back. Some musicians, which will be a challenge. A lot of them out there, and. Uh, yeah, man. And, you know, sometime probably middle of October through middle of December, we'll, we'll be doing some touring. Uh, not a huge tour, maybe, you know, somewhere around 20, 25 cities uh -huh. and uh, small theater. Uh, not, not small theaters, but, you know, 2,500, 3,000 seat places. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then come back, you know, maybe expand the show a little bit and come back uh, later on in the year. So Good, man. Good. Well, but uh, we just want to turn it back over and get you, get you place more. For oh, sure. Okay. I thought maybe... Uh, 
especially for down here. This is like an older one. This is, you know, something that I've always liked. This was something I wrote at a time when I was feeling really strong. And, you know, you you, you create that illusion that you're always going to feel strong when you do. And don't we? Mm. And you don't, usually. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, as the way things are going now, I guess the song's taken on a little bit of a new meaning for me. It's sort of reinforced my faith in cycles a little bit. This is from Rumors called Never Going Back Again. All right, man. Microphones, your little guitar yeah. box out there. That's something. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got our fancy stuff on like like when I played the trumpet to make it sound right. real good. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Just carrying it on your own, man. <laughs> so Lindsay, so so you pretty much, you know, you writing your stuff and how you feeling. You know, I mean, you just oh, express yourself. Oh, yeah, I'm feeling great. You know, there are times when you maybe are a little frustrated. Uh, you know, you, in a group, you always play ball. You, you try to concentrate on the things that uh, relate to the group. Sometimes things that are important to you go by the wayside a little bit. Mm. And um, so, uh, really, again, this is the first time I've had a chance to sort of look at the number of creative tools that I have and, and try to tap into them or at least get a start at doing that. And uh, I, feel, I feel great. I feel better than I felt in about 10 years. Really, yeah, that's you know? well. Looking, look, looking at your new album, pictures of you when you were young. Uh -huh. like, baseball uniform. You look, uh, you look like little Elvis here with the guitar. What do you yeah, like, well, that was, right I here? think that was the model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's I was about cool. nine years old there, yeah. That's something, man. Well, uh, well, please, can you play another one for us? Oh, sure. Kill. You know, we got a, a single coming out, uh, I think this week. Is it this week? It's called Countdown. It's off the Out of the Cradle. And uh, it's one of those kind of those rockers. Got a screaming solo at the end. So you say, well, sh how are you going to do that with this guitar? <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, Maybe you could actually scream. <laughs> well, okay, that's what we'll do. We'll actually scream. Right. There you go. You got it. Well... Sitting in 
Right back with Lindsey Buckingham. Really, we're going to take your calls, give you a chance to talk to one of the greats. All right? Hang on. We'll be right back. Lindsey Buckingham, our very special guest. <clears throat> what if I, my, my voice is hurt. What's that all about? <laughs> you just sitting here listening. <laughs> ah, man. Man, okay. That counts. We, we need to play that off CD, see how the studio works. <laughs> cool. Okay, guys, we're going to open them up and give you a chance here on Open Line. Lindsey, this is a portion of the broadcast where, as frightening as it may be, we, we talk to some, some listeners. Yeah, well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hello, Open Line. I've been trying all morning. <laughs> I, I just I just wanted to tell Lindsey Buckingham I've been a fan for so many years. Oh, Johnny's disappointed. <laughs> yeah, he thought you were yeah. excited to talk to him for a second. Right. No, no. <laughs> I, get to, I, I get to show off my talent in front of Lindsey. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be up there right now if I didn't have three kids. <laughs> but um, anyway, I do have the Buckingham Knicks album, and um, I'm so happy that Lindsey Buckingham has come out with a new album. I have it. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I hope he does go on tour. I Oh, yes, we uh, will. I just want to say, you know, thanks a whole lot for all your music over the years. It's, uh, I don't know, it spoke to my soul and and keeps me going on well, bad days. Uh, that's, and, that's the best thing you can hear as an artist. I really appreciate that, really. So, I just, you know, I've been, I couldn't believe it when I, I heard you were going to be on here, and I do hope you'll come back and, and play for us. There's nothing like seeing Lindsey Buckingham in concert uh, on the stage. I, I just think they're, they're just a great guitar player and musician, and and I mean, I really just don't even know what to say. I'm in well, awe. Like you said it. That's, that's <laughs> great. I appreciate it. We will be coming back to see you on tour. 
So, well, you know. I will be there, and I'll be great. hanging out at the doors trying to get right. your autograph. I've done this <laughs> every right. time. So. Well, oh, that's great. I appreciate so that. So thanks a lot. All right. All right. Thanks for the call. Thank you. Okay. We were talking a little earlier about the Buckingham Knicks album, that mm -hmm. there may be a future for that project on CD. Well, finally. yeah, Stevie and I, uh, I know you guys were mentioning it as we were driving in. Stevie and I did buy the rights back a few years ago, and um, uh, it's... You know, I think what will happen is probably we'll just sell it back to Warner's, you know. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> before a small profit. And, yeah, you know, they cut, a, cut a nice yeah. deal, you know. <laughs> hey, what? So, uh, yeah, that, I mean, it's been a while. I, I didn't realize, neither one of us realized that it was that much in demand on CD. Uh -huh. And, of course, a lot of people have the, the LPs from that long It's one of those things you, you discover people that have it. And every, it seems like everybody that ever bought a copy of it is going, yeah, yeah, I thought it was the only one. Or you right. know, it's kind of like an almost like a cult thing. Well, it was that way. In fact, when, you know, you're talking about the popularity of the, these little pockets. It was almost like a college kind of thing uh -huh. where it really comes up from the grassroots. And, you know, managers don't understand that. <laughs> yeah. We had a, a funny experience with that album when we were in New York the one time. Polydor, the label we were on, uh, didn't seem to understand that record at all. Uh -huh. And I don't, I don't know if you guys would remember the song, but um, <clears throat> the, the head of A&R at Polydor, and this, you're talking about the head of artists and repertoire. Mm -hmm. you know? right, he, right. So he should know songs, he should right. know artists. Uh -huh. He says, you guys are, he's sitting behind his desk, you guys are doing the wrong kind of thing here. <laughs> I think you should be doing something more like this. And he puts on a 45 and it was Jim Stafford's Spiders and Snakes. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Novelty. Can you believe that? Sounds like our agent. That's, no, our, man, that's, a, that's our company, folks. Yeah, so. Man. Can you believe that? So, Jim Stafford, what an artist. Yeah. So, uh, the, and the deal, let me see, uh, Fleetwood Mac now, God's going to be putting out a box set. That's right. Christmas. Now, is it any the deal, like, you're going to do maybe some songs to go along with that, some new stuff? Well, I think there'll probably be, like, three new tracks on there. Um, is this stuff that's previously been recorded uh, with the band and it's not been released or that will this be right I, well mine probably will be i you know i told them originally that if i if the time permitted i would even go in and you know produce uh -huh. some new tracks yeah. uh, but it just i don't know it's just not looking like I've, i'm gonna have the time yeah. when it's like a year down the line you always think it's gonna work out yeah but uh so that's probably coming out around christmas i think mm, all right yeah. Let's take some more calls you're on the air my question is if stevie asks you to to come back in and do a buckingham nicks album again would you do it um, I don't know. I mean, right again, you're talking about timing. Uh, right now, um, I'm I'm really pretty obsessed with following up uh, the commitment that I made to this project and and seeing how it develops and how it blossoms. But anything's possible down the line. You know, I, I right now there certainly are no plans for that. But um, uh, I, I don't know what to tell you. It's it's certainly stranger things have happened. Yeah. One, one more <laughs> quick question. Okay. Do you think? In the future, at any time, you would maybe get back with Fleetwood Mac if they asked? Well, uh, that is is probably less likely. Um, if they begged? If they begged? <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you know they already did? <laughs> <laughs> I have that feeling. <laughs> um, no, that's not nice to say. A little joke, a little morning joke. It's a morning show, folks. What are you going to do? Uh, no, I... <laughs> You know, it's just one of those things that, uh, that I mean, from my point of view, anyway, the timing, again, you know, situations have their own place in time. And, I, and I, the reason I left was because it was really not uh, a very uh, creative situation anymore. And, and that's a very important thing to me. So I, I can't imagine that having much viability anymore but again you, you never know we well, you know like 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 love will screw up a relationship yeah is that anything like uh, i mean you, how, how do you and stevie get along after you're like y'all are real close uh as as pretty well actually uh you know i think maybe better since i actually left the group and was able to i thought i'd sorted all that stuff out mm -hmm. but you know sometimes uh, you distance yourself a little more and you realize that you've built up these little walls here and there and you've cate oh. categorized these feelings here and these over here and, you know, you pull those walls down, there's nothing there but dust. But, it, mm. but uh, no, things are fine. You know, uh, after leaving the band, I think I was even more able to appreciate everyone's individual struggles within mm. the group and why they oh. did what they man, did. Man, uh, Lindsay, I think I heard a song in there, man. Pull them walls down and that dust. And yeah, oh, there you was, go. Was, He's writing it down. <laughs> walls, dust. I got it. Walt, pull them walls down. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Ah, hey, man. Okay. And, and Lindsay, uh, uh, the ladies here, they're, they're killing me. Uh, wanting to find out, are you romantically inclined now? I've Yes, I've been living with the same lady for, uh, you know, about, God, seven years. Oh, Is that right? God. <laughs> seven years. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, then, are you but feeling you know, romantically inclined right now? <laughs> Yes, I am, actually. Oh, I, uh, There's a lot of love in this room. I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, gosh, I made it on Open Line. This is fabulous. Lindsay Buckingham. Hi. You are wonderful. Thank you. I want to tell you, you're, um, you're first ever with Stevie. Oh, it's great. Oh, yeah. Great. Was... And the cover was really cool. Well, yeah, nudity always says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but... You're just wonderful. Her dad didn't like that at all, but, you know. Oh, really? right, is that right? Right. Well, it was tasteful. And I, mean, I love it. was. I mean, what was that, early 70s look? Yeah, that, that, cool. that Jeff Lynne look, uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's a great album. So Thank it, you. It still spins around on my player. Man, that album is, is hot. How yeah, many yeah. Was he had some copies with him right now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> 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 I've got to hang up because I can barely talk. I'm just shaking. This is okay, great. Okay, well. This is great. I appreciate it. Okay. Oh, wait. Take it. <laughs> bye bye. I mean, hello. Uh, uh, <laughs> hey, Lindsay. Hey, how you doing? This is Kevin. <laughs> All right. You remember me? Who? <laughs> Kevin. Kevin? Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. It wasn't. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, right. Kevin. The last concert in Birmingham, was that? Bur yeah, Birmingham. That was right. 72, 73. <laughs> He had, the, he had the, the red shirt on, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. and holding the lighter up uh, at the end of the concert. Right, the, the paper made pen, I remember. Yeah. You remember me from Gastonia? Mm -hmm. Gastonia, North Carolina. Gastonia, North Carolina. Hey, I, I'll tell you, what, I have not. Let's, let's just cut to the chase a little bit. Uh, did, did you really meet Lindsay in Gastonia, North Carolina? No, I talked to him. You talked oh, to him? Yeah, rock line. Now, was he, now was he. You talked to him on the rock line? Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, you mean do I do I remember you from from Coburn uh, for yeah. a month or so ago? Yeah. Well, I you know I I I'd like to say I do, but it's you know <laughs> there've been a lot of calls under the bridge since then. What can uh, I tell you? I'm sorry. Okay, I got a question about between Mick and Stevie. Uh huh. Do you think uh -oh. he did the right thing for not giving him silver her silver spring to put on time's face? Well, I, you know, I think Mick, is it, you're, you must have read something Stevie said about that, because I, I think Mick sort of took a bum rap for that. Um, that was not just Mick. I think he was expressing the feelings of the group, that that was a song that was a Fleetwood Mac song um, and was, again, a place in time, a point in time that related to that. And I, I, I don't think anyone was that comfortable with her, you know. I mean, that was not, that was, I mean, that was even co-written in some ways. I, I don't... Now, this is pretty frightening. Uh, I didn't understand what the guy from Gastonia said, and Lindsay, and Lindsay did. What, what, well, this, what, the song, what song Silver Springs, which okay. was, was the B-side of Go Your Own Way and did not make it on Rumors, but mm. was still a Fleetwood Mac song. I think she, the, the point is she wanted to use that for something on her own. I see. And, and I, you know, there was just a little problem within the group right. in, in terms of letting that go. I think that's what it was. So yeah. Mick took the rap, though. Yeah. Okay. I was told that he wouldn't let her have the tape put on it. Well, I don't know what the details were. I wasn't around, so, you know. But she, he was certainly the object of her anger, as far as I understand. All right. What I want to know is, how is a guy from Gastonia so well-connected into the music <laughs> scene? <laughs> in LA? <laughs> Tell you what, we'll, uh, we'll break for these commercials. Which is, uh, from in the building, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. Bye -bye. More Bye -bye. Lindsay Buckingham next. Hang on. TV's funniest newlywed. And here we are, John Moore and Billy. I think what makes this job just like the best. I mean, besides, you know, all the records I can steal. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 get to hang out with Lindsey Buckingham here. This is great, Lindsey, man. You're a super guy. You know, I mean, usually, I mean, you know, famous. I mean, some people, you know, they're famous. You got it. You get them. I mean, you know, just like, just not, not real yeah. people. You know, it happens like this. Is, is that, I mean, like. I want to back to the Fleetwood Mac thing, but I mean, success is tough, isn't it? I mean, is success tough? Well, it's got, it's a double-edged sword, I'd say, yeah. You know, but it's, I don't know, I guess in some ways, because of, the, the, you know, if I were to choose the one contribution 
of mind to the group. It probably wouldn't be as guitarist or singer or writer. It would be as someone who was taking raw material and fashioning it into a sound, you know, yeah. for the group. And in a sense, that contribution put me sort of a little bit more behind the scenes and a little less understood, at least in the earlier days. And I was kind of able to sit back and watch what was going on a little bit more from the yeah. sidelines. And maybe that, you know, maybe it gave me a little more perspective early on. I'd like to think anyway, so. Who knows? All <laughs> right. Let's take a few more calls. Open line. John Boy, Billy. Hey. Yo. Jeff Pillars. Hey, Jeff. Hey. How you doing, man? How's it going? Good. Oh, yeah. Listen, I've kind of been out of touch on this whole rock and roll thing. You know, I've kind of got messed up on the lyrics here. Okay. I swear to God, when Lindsay was singing that first song, <laughs> I swear I heard him say there's a shackle on my cat stump or something like that. <laughs> that was or, it. Shackle on my cat stump. <laughs> or shackle in my ketchup or something like that. I, 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 am, am I hearing this wrong or is something going on here? Well, I did. That was my first attempt, and then I changed it to something else. Actually, no, well, you, know, you might want to stick with that because that's uh, that's very provocative. That's very now. That's shekel, very shekel, shekel on, shekel my, on cat. my cat. It's stone. down between that and spiders and snakes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jim Stafford is a wonderful man. Yeah, wonderful <laughs> man, wonderful man. Actually, it was shadow on daddy's stone as in you know gravestone so thanks a lot Jeff. but you know way to go jeff that's that was another way to go i i you yeah, know i'll think stuff. about that check on the cat stuff check around the cat stuff boy yankees come down here messing up I'm everybody telling you. yeah now wait a minute wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm from around here i'm from shelby i think <laughs> right. let me see where the pin on the map is today shelby that's right you, you guys know this guy or what you know? yeah, he's, a, he's like a local actor oh i oh, see i got you i just I just played the role of Wart in Super Mario Brothers. I'll have oh, you know. my God. <laughs> did, did you really, Jeff? Yes, I did. Congratulations, I was in man. a rubber suit up to my neck in 600-degree weather. <laughs> right. How does this rock and roll thing go? You guys got to wear funny outfits in that? Or <laughs> and, and leave show business. <laughs> 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 All right, Jeff. Hey, we'll talk to you later, right, man. Buddy, be good. All right. Bye now. Hello. John Boy. Yes, sir. Hey. hey. Lindsay. Yes. Happy, man. Listen, on the, uh, on the Rumors album, uh, I noticed it's got a few pictures of you playing a Les Paul. Is that right? A white one? Yeah. Uh, that's do, you right. still, do you still have that guitar? And do you still play Gibsons or anything like that? Um, a little bit. Actually, it's interesting. When I joined the group, I was playing a Telecaster, and in many ways, that was well suited to uh, you know someone who didn't use a pick, a finger uh -huh. style, mm. sort of a lead finger style. And then when I joined the group, you know, this is one of the compromises you make when you when you join a group. There was an existing sound there, and and neither a Stratocaster nor a, a Telecaster would fit into the piano-based drum sound they had, which was a little bit fatter. Uh -huh. So I had to switch over to a Les Paul, and, and eventually I switched over to a custom guitar called a Turner. So okay. I still use Gibsons once in a while in the studio, but it's not my stage guitar anymore. Whoa, that's cool. Were you using a pick while ago, or was that finger picking? No, I, I don't use a pick. Man, that was some intense picking while ago yeah. on that song. It All right. It sounded really good. Thanks a lot. All right, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Oh, See you, man. Oh, golly, we're, we're about out of time. Lindsay, what, what do you think, man? You feel like, feel like playing one more? Yeah. What the heck? Um, this is uh, not the normal thing. We had such a good time today. <laughs> Throw an extra one in for free. All right. All right. Let's just, you know, do another oldie for you. Good. Mm -hmm. I hope this is the right key, because I haven't done this one in a long time. <laughs> Bye.
Especially for you. Lindsay, yeah. thank you so much, man. You are the best. I had a great time. You are the best. Out of the right. cradle. It's out this week. Get that, and we'll, we can't wait for it to get back to the South, man. Thanks. Pleasure. Lindsay Buckingham.